The subject then shot the pilot and the co-pilot. He then reloaded his pistol, and he grabbed another uh, passenger by the hair and forced her towards the door of the cockpit, where he again shot uh, the pilot and the co-pilot, both of whom were by this time uh, slumped in their seats. FBI Special Agent Thomas Farrow giving details of the attempted hijacking at Baltimore Washington International Airport that left three people dead and one in critical condition. The hijack attempt started at 7.03 a.m. A man identified as a large Caucasian, about 43 years old, went to the boarding gate of Delta Flight 523 for Atlanta, brandishing a 22 caliber pistol and shot an airport guard in the back of the head, killing him. He then went into the aircraft, eight passengers were already aboard, continued to the cockpit and shot the pilot and co-pilot. The passengers and stewardesses aboard escaped from emergency exits. 30-year-old Anne Arundel County policeman Charles Troyer ran down the boarding bridge, spotted the hijacker through the porthole of the door, and shot him, killing him instantly. Dead are the hijacker, the guard, and 32-year-old co-pilot Fred Jones of Dallas. In critical condition is pilot Doug Lofton, who suffered wounds in the back and shoulder. 21-year-old stewardess Karen Smoot wrenched her back, jumping from the plane, and is in fair condition. The hijacker also carried a briefcase, which police, with the aid of a specially trained German shepherd, found was a crudely built gasoline bomb. If detonated while the plane was airborne, it would have blown everyone to pieces. Army bomb experts from Fort Meade detonated at several yards from the aircraft. Neither police nor FBI agents know anything further regarding the hijacker's motives. Andrew Silberstein at Baltimore Washington International Airport. Hello, how you doing? This is uh, uh, Fred McGee. I'm a, a retired officer from an NRL County Police Department. I was hired the uh, August the first, 1959, and I was uh, uh, went through the academy there in January 1960. And then uh, uh, after graduating from the academy, I went on patrol in the. Uh, in the uh, Lithicum area, well, I moved all about for a few years, but uh, uh, at the morning in question in February 19 to, uh, 1964, I'm sorry, 74 it was, I was assigned to uh, the 201 car, which was the, Glen uh, was the Lithicum area and Dorsey area. And uh, we received a call right after, shortly after I went on shift, and uh, uh, to uh, respond to the airport. An officer needs assistance. There was attempted uh, hijacking, and when I got there, uh, Butch Troyer, which we all called him, but that wasn't his real name. But he had already been on the scene. He was uh, working part time at the time, and he had. Heard the shot when he was up to the coffee shop, and he ran down, and that's when he found uh, Officer uh, Ransberg on the ground, been shot in the head. And uh, Butch then pursued the hijacker when the uh, man there told him that uh, he went down uh, to get on the plane. He's going to hijack the plane. Then Butch ran down, and he uh, took a few shots with his gun, but couldn't. Nowhere could the, his bullets penetrate into the airplane. So Butch returned and took uh, Officer uh, uh, Ramsberg's 357 Magnum and, uh, uh, and ran back to the plane. After he was there, and uh, uh, a few, uh, few minutes or so, I arrived shortly on the scene and uh, uh, I parked at the uh, gate on the opposite side and run up the uh, ramp and uh, come into the building that way and then Butch was uh, had run back and he had looked to see if there was any help here at that time him and I ran down the ramp and we took a position down the uh, uh, the boarding ramp and uh, uh, then an officer Todd from the airport police department had come and uh, assisted us and uh, we was there for a while, and Butch had said that uh, uh, he thought he shot him, 
because uh, he come he seen what he thought was him they come up past the door he was putting a bomb down at the entrance of the door to t attempt to blow the plane up because he knew after he shot the uh, pilot and co-pilot that uh, uh, there was no chance of him getting off the ground with the tires being flat lieutenant miller arrived on the scene lieutenant charles miller and he uh, was with the five or six officers down on the lower level and he gave an order for the blow the tires the officers to blow the tires out so the airplane couldn't leave and uh, uh and butch and i and uh officer tide decided we got to get in the plane we got to take this plane back before it got off the ground and uh, we ready to go down to the lieutenant to come on up and uh, uh and as we opened the door and i went into the uh the pilot's uh, uh, quarters where they were sitting in there, the, co the cockpit, and Butch and uh, uh, Officer Tide took up a position to the rear of the plane, of uh, facing the rear of the plane from the front of the plane where they could control the situation. As we went in the door, there was a white male laying on the floor gasping for breath. And that's uh, obviously, uh, at the time, we didn't know that was the individual and uh, uh that had was trying to uh, hijack it but then through investigation we found out that was him because none of us had seen him at first and what he looked like but uh, uh at that point lieutenant miller come up lieutenant charles miller and he took over the investigation me being a district officer at the time working the road i uh, had to respond back to my uh, district and uh and, and patrol my area uh, so after that I, I have no detail other than the, what I have been told afterwards and uh, but Lieutenant Miller Charles Miller had all the information when Lieutenant Miller arrived on the scene on the second floor where we were uh, we had secured the airplane just before that and uh, the passengers was uh, bailing out the back of the plane going down the chute that's when that uh, young lady had uh, hurt her back injured her back uh jumping on the, that ramp but uh, uh lieutenant miller come up and he uh, and he ordered one of i think that was uh, uh dale uh, uh it's been so long ago hmm. dale smith uh ray smith i'm sorry to take the uh, uh, the uh, uh, attache case was there out in the runway away from everything. So they did that and they notified the bomb uh, squad and uh, uh, and then uh, I had to get back on patrol. So uh, I left and I was told later that, uh, uh, that it was a fire bomb. It was gasoline in there and his intentions was what they, uh, they fit, thought was to uh, to carry out the, uh, to set the plane afire when he knew it was no chance of getting off the ground. At the time uh, the uh, the bomb was deactivated, uh, it was Fort Meade Bomb Squad that uh, was uh, summoned to the uh, airport to uh, deactivate that bomb, and uh, also at the time we did not have a SWAT team. Uh, and it was just the uh, road officers that was involved in the uh, in the taking back the airplane. Uh, and uh, when I went to, uh, into the cockpit, uh, I did know uh, one of the uh, pilot was uh, uh, dead, and the co-pilot was wounded. So uh, uh, then the medics were summoned at that point, which they were on the scene immediately. Officer uh, uh, Charles uh, uh, Troyer was uh, very alert that day and because of him, he saved a lot of lives. And uh, sad to say that uh, just about uh, two or three years ago, uh, we called him Butch. That's what everybody called him in the department. Butch passed away and it's sad. And uh, uh, for his good work and good deed, 
the uh, county uh, police department named the training center Butch Troyer's Training Center, which was a, an honor in itself. Butch was there over 30 some years. Uh, we never did think he was going to retire, but finally he did. But he was a terrific guy and he really did the county an honorable uh, favor that day. The officer that uh, George Ramberg got shot in the head was the uh, first one shot on the scene that morning. He was a terrific guy. I knew him from working part time with him over the airport. And uh, he was a scoutmaster and he was due to get married, I guess in a couple of months or less than a month. I can't remember, it's been so long ago. But the only thing was he was so uh, such a terrific individual that it, it was hard to accept that, you know, what the guy did to him. And, uh, uh, and like I say, uh, Butch uh, was married and he had children and I, ha I lost touch with Butch after I retired in 85. And, uh, uh, but I seen his wife not too long ago and she reminded me that he passed away and I said, yes, I heard that and it was sad. But, uh, uh, it's uh, it was a horrible morning for all of us to see a comrade uh, fall like that, and the young man didn't even have a chance to defend himself. And uh, I said, "Where's the officer?" And he's eating, he hollered, "He's down there at the uh, airplane." And uh, uh, and that's when I ran. Butcher hollered for help, and that's when I ran down in there. And, and to assist him. And then Officer Tide, of course, come in later. And uh, Officer Tide later retired from the fire department at BWI. Uh, he was a uh, law enforcement officer at the time that this happened at BWI. Uh, I tell you, it was it. Everybody was shook up. All the uh, friendship officers and, uh, of course, all of the county officers there would work special detail there. Uh, we were all upset too because we all knew George Ransberg and he was a terrific guy, you know, and uh, we all kept saying to ourselves, why him? Why was it him? You know, uh, but it was sad and I could only feel for his girlfriend and his uh, mother and father at the time because he was a well-known kid at, uh, at uh, his area that he lived in. Bike hijacked a Delta Airlines flight leaving Baltimore, Maryland, and he had big plans, namely to crash the plane into the White House. Bike had a gun and a bomb on board. When he got to the cockpit of the plane, he shot both the co-pilot and the pilot, killing the first and injuring the latter. Thanks to the unsmart thinking of taking out the pilot, Bike never got the plane off of the ground. Then a police officer pursued him, who shot him while he was still in the plane. Accounts vary as to whether or not the cop killed Bike or merely wounded him before Bike took his own life. Bike didn't get to carry his plan out, but he did leave his mark on pop culture. He's a character in Stephen Sondheim's and John Weedman's 1991 musical Assassins. 
and he was portrayed by Sean Penn in the 2004 film The Assassination of Richard Nixon. He's even alleged to be one of the inspirations for the character Travis Bickle, who was played by Robert De Niro in the 1976 hit film Taxi Driver. Gentlemen, my, my name is Sam Vick, and if you don't if you don't move, then no one will get hurt. If you don't move, then no one will get hurt. You understand? Okay. I want you to fly this plane. I want you to fly it low. I want you to fly it very low. I hear you, Sam. So here's what I need to do. I need to call the tower. Okay? I'm, I'm going to call the tower. What I'm going to reach over here. I'm going to get my headset. I'm going to put it on and I'm going to call the tower because, because I need them to come and take the tugs out from front of me. It's okay, Sam. You listen to me, right? Okay. Ever. Sure. 